Hello grade 9 science class. Welcome back to lesson 10. Uh, this is titled Bohr Diagrams. Uh, it is one of two key points as you can see me uh, as you can see above as well as valence electrons. Uh, essentially we are going to take the information from the periodic table that we talked about in the last lesson. We are going to find out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons we have and then we're going to turn that into a Bohr diagram which is uh, a drawing that Niels Bohr, as you remember from a couple lessons ago, represented his elements as, and it's a very simple, concise way for us to look at each element, how many electrons, protons, and neutrons it has, and where each are located. Uh, so it is very useful for us, and you'll use it as you move on in science a lot. So the atomic structure. Um, the structure of an atom. So Bohr diagrams show us how many electrons are in each energy level uh, or each electron shell surrounding the nucleus. As you remember there are orbitals essentially small, medium, and large um, that are different energy levels that the electrons reside on. Each energy level or electrons shell is the space around the nucleus in which the electrons might be found. Uh, the shell closest to the nucleus holds two electrons. The next two can hold eight, and after that it's 18, and we call this the 28818 pattern. So the first shell is very important to remember. It has two electrons only, a maximum of two electrons. Second and third are a maximum of eight, and the fourth is a maximum of 18. Uh, so valence electrons and valence energy levels, that's key point two here. So the valence energy level is the energy level that is the furthest from the nucleus that has uh, electrons in it. So we are going to have multiple rings. If we have uh, 10 electrons in a particular atom, the first level can only hold two. So you're going to have to move out to the next energy level, the next the outside energy level that's occupied is called the valence energy level. And the electrons that are in that outer shell are called the valence electrons. So electrons that are the furthest away from the nucleus are the valence electrons. They occupy the valence energy level. Valence electrons have higher energies associated with them than closer to the nucleus. So you get higher in energy as you move away towards the valence electrons. The lower energy ones are closer towards the nucleus in the lower energy um, shells. So this is a very simple diagram of uh, a Bohr diagram. I don't really like it. I'm going to skip right on to uh, showing you how we're going to do this. So we have some examples. You should have some space for you to do the examples on. We have hydrogen first. So if we look on our periodic table, we see that the atomic number is one and the atomic mass is one. That means that we have protons uh, and electrons equal one because that's the atomic number and then our neutrons are one for the mass minus one for the atomic number so zero so we have zero neutrons so it's important that we still be able to do this from last lesson what we're then going to do is we're going to draw a circle that represents the nucleus so the nucleus is represented here we have protons one neutrons zero so you may need to write that a little bit bigger than I did. I'm writing with a big fat Sharpie, so it's a little tough. So we have one proton and zero neutrons. But where do the electrons go? The electrons go in the shell outside. So we draw one shell and we have one electron. So we're just gonna draw it right there. So the electron is represented by the dot. That is a Bohr diagram. It is the simplest Bohr diagram that you can draw because it is for hydrogen. And hydrogen only has atomic number of one, atomic mass of one, it has one electron and one proton. So it is the absolute simplest Bohr diagram that we can draw. Let's draw lithium. That is a little bit more complicated and I'll show you again the process. So lithium has atomic number three. So it has protons equaling three and electrons equaling three. It has a mass of six, so that means we're going to take six, subtract three to get three 
neutrons. So we have the protons, the electrons, and the neutrons that we need. I'm going to draw my, my nucleus now, but a little bit bigger so that there's space to write stuff in it. So that's my nucleus. I have three protons and three neutrons. I got that from here and from here. And then I have three electrons to place. Now, if I remember back a few slides, it said that our rule was 288. So the lowest uh, shell could only hold two. But I have three. So I'm going to start with a shell. And in this shell, we can only hold one, two electrons. So we have a third electron. So we're going to need to now go to the next shell. So we're going to draw the next shell bigger, higher in energy. And it's going to have one electron. We have one, two, three electrons given here. So we can just write the protons in the middle, but the electrons we need to show in its uh, in their orbits. This is the valence shell, and that is a valence electron. It is the outer shell, and that electron is in the outer shell, so it's a valence electron. Um, this is again lithium and it is fairly simple as it only has three protons, three neutrons, and three electrons. Let's uh, talk some more here, sorry. Okay, so some steps. So how to draw the Bohr-Rutherford models. The first step, as you know, is to essentially find out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons you have. And then you're going to draw the nucleus. After you draw the nucleus, you're going to put the symbol, the number of protons, the number of electrons, uh, sorry, and the number of neutrons in the nucleus. And for the third step, you're going to use the 28818 pattern to fill the energy levels. You always fill the first energy level, and then you move on to the second energy level until it's completely full, and then you move on to the next one when it is completely full. So you always fill up the whole energy level before you move on to the next one. So there are our rules, our steps. Draw the nucleus, put the protons and neutrons in the middle, draw the electrons, um, and increasing in shell size, 28818. Do a few more examples here. We have carbon. So carbon has a mass of 12, atomic number 6. So protons are equal to 6. Electrons are should be a negative there, are equal to 6. And our neutrons are equal to 12 minus 6. If I look on my periodic table, the mass is 12, and the atomic number is 6. So that is 6 neutrons. I can draw my nucleus. So my protons are 6, my neutrons are 6. And then I'm going to draw my first energy level. I know my first energy level is allowed to have two electrons on it, and I draw them paired like that. Um, there are reasons for this, so we draw them paired. And then after we draw our next one, we have two electrons used, so we have four left. So we are now going to uh, put our electrons in, but there's a specific way that we do this. We have four essentially uh, points. We have top, bottom, left, and right. And electrons can go in each of those. And what we do is we put one in each of them first. So for carbon, we have four electrons to put in this valence shell. So we put one here, one here, one here, and one here. Uh, if there were more, we would pair them up, and I'll show you that in, in the oxygen uh, example. But because we have four uh, only, we have four spots, we put one in each. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six electrons, six protons, and six neutrons. This is our Bohr diagram for carbon. Okay, we can now do, let's do a different color for oxygen. I'm feeling like switching it up. Let's do blue. For oxygen, we have uh, the atomic number is eight. So the number of protons is equal to eight, and the number of electrons is also equal to eight. The atomic mass of oxygen is 16. So the number of neutrons is equal to 16. Subtract the atomic number, which is eight. So the number of neutrons is also eight. We can now draw our nucleus, put our protons, 
and our neutrons here. And these will not always be the same number, it's just we're doing very simple ones. So they are. And we'll put in our electrons. The first shell, oops, it's not a very good shell, but you get the idea, can hold two. So one, two, and we pair them up like that. The next shell is going to hold six, so I'll hopefully make a better shell this time. Good, not bad, better. And we're going to put them in one at a time in each corner. So we've got top, bottom, right side, bottom, left. That's six, we've got two more, so we're gonna continue top and then right. So we've paired up those two and these two are unpaired. So this is our Bohr diagram for oxygen. We've written the protons in here and the neutrons in here along with the electrons on the outside. This is the valence shell and all six of these are valence electrons. So this is a very clear and concise way to show how many protons, neutrons, and electrons it has, along with how many valence electrons, how many electrons are paired up, and with how many valence shells there are. So it's a very, very uh, useful diagram to be able to draw. So we need to be able to draw these for the first 18 elements, one through 18. They're the first three rows, essentially. These diagrams represent the relative energies of the atoms, electrons, and do not show the positions of the electrons in the atoms. So the diagrams, they show the relative uh, energies compared to the shells, not exactly where they are. Uh, electrons don't follow circular paths, but they fly around the nucleus in random paths, and the shells should be drawn um, can be drawn using horizontal lines like these ones. It shouldn't say should. It should say can, uh, like the ones that I'm going to show you there. They're kind of uh, different examples, maybe easier for you to draw. And I'm okay with you doing whichever one is best for you. So you can see here, this is the arrangement of the first 18 elements. Each of this is these are a Bohr diagram. So hydrogen has one proton and one electron in the first shell. Helium has two protons, two neutrons, and has two electrons, and they're both in the first shell here as well. Let's draw our attention to boron right here. Boron is atomic number five. It has five protons and six neutrons, just as are shown. And in the first energy level, we can see we've got two electrons, and in the second, we've got three. So if you'd like to write it like this, you absolutely can. You can also see 14 here is nitrogen. We have 14 protons, sorry, I should say silicon. We have 14 protons, 14 neutrons, two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and four in the valence shell. So uh, these are all very valid examples of Bohr diagrams for each of the first 18 elements. And some patterns that we can observe. Uh, the elements in the same family or the same column have the same number of electrons in their valence energy level. So they have the same number of valence electrons. Period number indicates the number of energy levels. So the number of rows indicates the number of energy levels. These valence energy levels structures are determined, uh, determines how one element will re re react with one another. So if we look here, you can see that everything in row one only has one energy level. Everything in row two has two energy levels, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now, different numbers of electrons, but two energy levels. This one has three energy levels in the third row because it is in the third row. In each column, you can see 16 here has six valence electrons and six valence electrons, three valence electrons, three valence electrons. So they are grouped in that way for a reason. The period number, indicates the number of energy levels, one, two, or three, or four as you go down, and the column number represents the valence electrons. It's actually the last number in the column number. If we're 13, we're talking about three. If we have 14, we're talking about four valence electrons. Uh, if it's full, it's a noble gas, and we'll talk about that in the future. Your job is to draw a whole bunch of Bohr diagrams, and I want you to draw as many of these as possible. I want you to use the information provided for each element in your periodic table to draw the Bohr diagrams. Rather than drawing individual protons and neutrons, you may simple, simply label how many of each of these there are. Uh, then write the number of electrons in the appropriate energy levels. 
and keep in mind how I've shown you how to do this. Uh, the maximum number of electrons in each energy level, the first is two, and then eight, and then eight, and then 18. I want you to be able to do one through 18 automatically. That is your job to figure out how to do that. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, thanks very much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in class.